In fact, what looked to be a cyst on the surface of an otherwise healthy fetus turned out to be an unformed twin who had been absorbed early in pregnancy and was still growing. During her 35-week pregnancy, Monica Vega of Barranquilla, Colombia, had a scan that revealed her unborn child may have a liver cyst. A color scan revealed that it was a tiny twin fetus growing inside the baby girl's intestines, with its own umbilical cord linked to the baby girl's intestines as it developed. Within two weeks, the smaller twin had grown by 20% to 30%, putting the bigger twin's internal organs at risk of being crushed by the smaller twin. Monica also developed preeclampsia, a condition characterized by high blood pressure that can lead to a stroke. At 37 weeks, doctors performed an emergency section, resulting in the birth of a 7-pound baby girl named it Samara. A day later, the fetus, which had arms and legs, but no heart or brain, was medically removed from the mother's womb. A baby girl was born with her own twin sister, who was still growing, and had its own umbilical cord inside her at the time of her birth. The birth of a tiny girl named Itzamara on February 22 in Barakia, Colombia, is extremely unusual occurrence for the fetus and fetus births, which were first documented in 188, but have only been seen a handful of times since then. There have been a few more incidents, especially in Asia, when a fetus was discovered after birth with shock doctors recognizing what would look like an abdominal cyst was in fact a developing baby. However, this case set a new standard because the mother's expert, obstetrician, Dr. Miguel Parasedra, discovered the anomaly during a scan at 35 weeks gestation using a 3D 4D ultrasound technology, which was previously unheard of. In order to prevent her twin from growing and causing damage to her internal organs, the team delivered 7-pound Itzamara through section at 37 weeks at the La Merced facility. On the following day, they performed keyhole surgery to remove her 45mm 14 grand twin, who had perished after its umbilical cord had been severed during the procedure. The infant had limbs and legs but no heart and no brain, so she was born without them. Doctor. Paris Avadra said that Itzamara was pregnant with her sister and that this was the root of the problem. Now, a month after the incident, its Samara is in excellent health, with little evidence of any injury or effect to her abdomen. Dr. Paris Savitar told his local newspaper, The Herald, that it was one of the oddest and most fascinating things you can witness in maternal fetal medicine. After the tale was first reported by local television networks, Los Inframantes Monica Vega, 33, was directed to Dr. Paris Avera, a high-risk pregnancy specialist who had previously worked in Barcelona. After her main obstetrician noticed what seemed to be a cyst on the baby's liver, Dr. Paris Avedra performed an ultrasound on the infant and discovered the cyst. He discovered that it wasn't a cyst after all, but rather another little fetus with its own umbilical cord, thanks to the use of a colored Doppler, which provides a multicolored view of the blood vessels for greater clarity. It's possible to have twins while still in the womb because of late cell division, which means that the twins do not entirely separate. The larger of the two connects to the mother through the placenta, while the smaller of the two attaches to the vessels of its twin. As the larger twin increases in size, the smaller twin is absorbed into the abdominal cavity. Dr. Parasa Vidra was taken aback, but not to the extent that Monica was taken aback, because they'd never heard of it or seen it before. And in fact, most people are unaware that something like this might happen to them, he said to the Herald. That conveying what they're going through can be tough. This happens once in a million times, he said. It took some convincing, but after we presented them with images and videos and scientific data, they were able to comprehend the situation and agreed to enable us to proceed with the appropriate actions to handle it. Dr. Paris Avedra was a close relationship with the media following his appearance as a high-profile pundit when Zika swept through northern South America in 2016, reached out to local journalists who filmed the birth and the subsequent surgeries, providing an unprecedented look at each step of the process. The physicians sought to delay the birth as long as possible in order to avoid the hazards connected with an early birth. However, after two weeks, a scan revealed that the underformed twin had grown 20% to 30%, posing a threat to Itzamara's health, 
prompting the doctors to perform exception on the day after its Amara's birth. The surgeons performed keyhole surgery to remove her 45 mm, 14 grams twin, who had perished after the umbilical cord had been severed during the procedure. Since Monica had been diagnosed with preeclampsia, a dangerously high blood pressure condition that can result in a stroke after childbirth, she had to be continuously monitored. They wanted to test whether they could keep the pregnancy going for as long as possible in order to avoid the hazards connected with premature birth. However, after only two weeks, a scan revealed that the underdeveloped twin had grown 20% to 30%, an amazingly quick increase that put its Amara's health in grave danger. Furthermore, Monaco was diagnosed with preeclampsia, a condition characterized by dangerously high blood pressure that can result in a stroke during pregnancy. The team gathered to prepare for the cesarean section and they were prepared to do laparoscopic surgery once its Samara had been stabilized 24 hours after the procedure began. Because the infant was dependent on its sister for survival, Dr. Parasavedra said that once the umbilical cord of the linked twin was cut, the baby's life came to an end. Monica and her husband, according to Drive. Parasavera, were surprised and in disbelief at first, but once we showed them images, films, and scientific data, they recognized the phenomenon. Mrs. Vega and her husband have returned home and are content with it tomorrow, but they're still in shock. What exactly are fetus and fetu twins, and what are the known cases of this phenomena? It's possible to have twins, while still in the womb, because of late cell division, which means that the twins do not entirely separate. The larger of the two connects to the mother through the placenta, while the smaller of the two attaches to the vessels of its twin. As the larger twin increases in size, the smaller twin is absorbed into the abdominal cavity. On January 1st, Aiden article appeared in the British Medical Journal describing the fetal in utero concept for the first time. It's believed that they occur in one out of every 5,000 newborns. The majority of those who have been documented were born in Asia and were diagnosed after they were born. It's a rare phenomenon characterized by the existence of one of the twins in the body of the other, and it occurs when two identical twins are born at the same time. Despite the fact that it most usually occurs in the retro-operational area, it's been recorded in a variety of other sites as well. This article describes two cases of fetus and fetu in which occurred the retro-operational area and the other which occurred in the sacrogial area, respectively. Fetus and fetus is a congenital condition that occurs in a small percentage of the population. Basically, it's a situation where a deformed and parasitic fetus is implanted in the body of its identical twin. Meckel was the first to define the anomaly, which was in the early 19th century. Despite the fact that the anomaly is more common in newborns and children, there have been reports of situations in which the aberration has remained asymptomatic until later ages with the help of relevant literature. This rare congenital defect, which has been documented approximately 100 times since its original definition in the 18th century, has been discussed in terms of prognosis and therapy in relation to its prognosis and treatment case. One we were directed to our hospital after a pre-diagnosis of abdominal mass was made on a 10-day-old female infant who was born to a 28-year-old mother during the 41st week of pregnancy through normal delivery. At the fourth live birth, a tumor with a diameter of approximately 10x15 cm was discovered in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen during a routine physical examination. During the operation, a mass measuring 10x15 cm was discovered in the retro-operational area of the patient. When we opened up the capsule, we discovered an intact fetal head, a trunk and a fetal arm and two leg-like structures that represented the extremities, as well as approximately 200 cc of serial hemorrhagic fluid. The fetus was completely covered by the verdict casia with the exception of its ventral side. The mass was completely removed, including the capsule that contained it. Clinical examination revealed non-calcified vertebral bodies along the midline of the fetus's spine which extended in a cranial and caudal direction in the sagittal plane from the cranial and caudal direction. The microscopic examination of the capsule revealed that it was lined primarily with multifold epithelium with some single-layered epithelium in some areas. The capsule also contains skin, skin extensions, glial tissue, striated muscle maturing cartilage, 
peripheral nerve, lung tissue, bone, and bone marrow tissues. There were no difficulties during the patient's post-operative recovery phase.